Hello and welcome back and today we're going to continue our look at comparing traditional RAID with SHR, Synology Hybrid RAID. Now we've done speed tests and encryption tests, now what we're going to do is introduce a new drive to both of our NASes here and with these two NASes we're going to install one into that um, first device and convert the RAID 1 into a RAID 5 and the other one which uses uh, SHR we're going to introduce that drive and then add that drive to the SHR and we're going to see which one creates and prepares our new uh, redundant one disk storage better and quicker. So again, it's gonna be really hard to time manage this video seeing as they're gonna be done staggered. But I've done a stopwatch here on the screen next to me and we're gonna be looking at that screen record there. Hopefully that's on screen or it's gonna be on there in a bit. And then what I'm gonna do is introduce these two drives into these NASes. So let's go for the distant bay in each. And this is our first device. I believe this is the RAID 1 NAS. And we're going to be introducing another 4TB WD Red into the equation. So again, same firmware, same drive. So yes, in the SHR box, we didn't have to use the same drive because SHR lets you use different drives. But for the sake of keeping things lovely and fair and even, these two devices will be using 4TB drives to add to the mix. Put that in there and introduce this drive into the fold. Put that in there. Slide that drive in. Yeah. One drive added. I'm keeping an eye on that screen to see if there's a notification to see the drive is added. Hasn't seen it yet. Same again for this device. Move that from there. Again, personally, I do quite like SHR, so I'm hoping, if I'm honest, that SHR will come out the winner on this, but who's to say? Um, we should hopefully do some performance benchmark tests between SHR and RAID 5 as well once these are completed and see how they compare with our SHR and RAID 1 test that we did previously in another video. But let's get this in here. Right there. Again, I could go around the table, but where's the fun in that? And we've introduced another drive into those. So what I'm going to do is move over to the screen. Um, I don't know if we'll keep this on screen where you can see me, but who knows. But I'm going to move over now to introduce these onto our NASes. And that clock at the bottom there, I'm going to leave that blank. So we'll go to our RAID 1 drive there. Also go into the storage manager on the SHR enabled one. We'll go into the storage pool and see if we're able to change the RAID. So we'll change the RAID type here and we'll add this to a RAID 5. Meanwhile on the SHR, we'll move over to the storage pool there. And we're going to add disk. And this, this would be the way in which we would add further storage to these both of these devices. So we can either add another mirror disk to the RAID 1. So in other words, you can have a RAID 1 that adds two disks of redundancy, uh, which is huge overkill, but some people may need that level of redundancy. But as you can see, both of these devices, they've got that 4TB, and we're going to add a disk to both of these to see how long it takes for each. This will obviously erase the new drive, same notification for both, and we're adding a drive to them now. As you can see, the capacity has is going to increase on both of these NAS devices. And then what we're gonna see is how long it takes the RAID 1 to convert to a RAID 5 against the SHR adding a brand new drive. So while it's doing that, why don't we start the clock now? And both of them are gonna be having the adding of the disk or the changing of the RAID, and then what we're going to see is a percentage there that shows synchronicity or synchronization as well as checking consistencies and overall stability of this RAID. So again, this may take overnight in the case of a RAID 5 because I know a RAID 5 can take quite a lot of hours or it could be very quick. So I'm going to leave this running on here and then come back when one or both of these have completed. Well, welcome back everyone. I don't know about you, but I've had a very good night's sleep. And here we are, 25 hours since I've last set up this RAID reconfiguration. And straight away, let's look at those results. Right now, the RAID 1 to RAID 5 change is at 39%, whereas the SHR is at 85%. Now, that is a good sign. It's going to mean that the SHR is complete first. And don't get me wrong, I know strictly this isn't the fairest of tests because we are changing a RAID 1 into a RAID 5. 
uh, whereas in the case of SHR, we are just adding another drive to an existing system known as the SHR. But I do think it is worthy of discussion because so many of you out there add drives gradually that the idea that you would order a four bay NAS and only put two disk drives in, a number of you are gonna make that choice between RAID 1 and SHR early on. And right now I can tell you that it definitely seems more advantageous to add drives to an SHR than it is to convert a RAID 1 into a RAID 5. Now, I might carry on doing this and let it get to the completion point to see just how long both of them take, and we'll keep the, the camera running and then I'll switch back to it later on and involve you guys in that. But right now I reckon we're gonna be seeing completion of that SHR sometime in the next few hours, and more than likely, we're gonna need at least another whole day on the RAID 1 to RAID 5 configuration. Remember, buy your now from SPAN, buy your, uh, buy your information, buy, uh, buy from SPAN, learn about NAS from nascompares.com, and do send me a message via Twitter if you've got any recommendations for tests in the future. The next video I'm gonna be doing after this is completed, um, in the next part of this, and I'll probably feature how long this took, I will be pulling a drive from both of these devices live. When I do pull that drive from both of, the, both of the individual units, I'm going to be then performing read-write actions to the volume. Because in theory, a Synology NAS shouldn't drop access to your storage in the event of losing a drive. What should happen is, the system is still able to obtain your data with a combination of the disks that are present and the parity that is present. What should drop is your read and write speed. So what we're gonna be seeing is if there's any difference in the read and write speeds between an SHR that's lost a drive and a RAID 5 configuration that has lost a drive. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.